Hello, and welcome to Back to the Science. I'm Dr. Susan Oliver, and I'm a scientist. This is the first of many videos where we'll be looking at false cancer cure claims. False cancer cure claims are particularly dangerous because often by the time people realize that the claims are false, it's too late for them to use proven treatments. So people spreading false cancer cure claims often contribute to the unnecessary deaths of people. There are a number of different false cancer cure claims, and I certainly won't be covering all of them in this one video. But in this video, I'm going to start by looking at people who overhype in vitro research. Now, in vitro research is research done on cells in a lab, and it's an important first step for all disease research. But a lot of people misunderstand in vitro research and think it's something that it isn't. So let's go back to the science or lack of science and have a look at an example of this. This is a tweet from Twitter about our old friend, Ivermectin. So they quietly released the papers showing that Ivermectin is a miraculous treatment for cancer and no media outlet has said a word. Hmm. Now it looks like Ivermectin could be a miracle cure for cancer and it's being hidden from us. And here is another one with a few details. Ivermectin has new application inhibiting colorectal cancer growth, PubMed, dot, 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 suggesting that Ivermectin might be a new potential anti-cancer drug therapy for human colorectal cancer and other cancers. Okay, so let's have a look at the actual paper that this tweet is referring to. It's called Ivermectin has new application in inhibiting colorectal cancer cell growth. Sounds impressive, hey? And this is the key figure from the paper, and it shows the viability of two types of cancer cells for different periods of time based on different doses. And if you just look at this figure, Ivermectin looks quite impressive. As you can see, at high doses, it does a very good job of killing the cancer cells. So is this something we should be impressed about? Well, actually, no, because killing cancer cells is incredibly easy. For instance, I could use this bottle of bleach. I could pour it onto the cancer cells and they would die. No problem at all. The trick is you need to be able to kill cancer cells but not kill normal cells. And I'm just going to show you some research that I've done to show you what I mean. Now, I'm not doing this to big note my research or anything. It's just a good example to explain what I'm talking about. So this is the paper. And by the way, it's been completely ignored by mainstream media. The paper is called Water-Soluble Antioxidant Dextrin Quercetin Conjugate with Potential Anti-Cancer Properties. And notice it says potential. It doesn't say it has anti-cancer properties. And that's important because you can never definitely say something is going to be a treatment for cancer based on in vitro research. And this particular study was just in vitro research. The only way to say for sure if a substance is effective or not in cancer is to perform a cl clinical trial. And sadly, the vast majority of compounds that work in vitro fail when they get into the clinical trial stage, which is possibly why mainstream media totally ignored my paper. Not as exciting as a conspiracy theory to hide potential cancer cure treatments, though. Anyway, back to the paper. This is a figure from the paper which is quite similar to the figure that I showed you from the previous ivermectin paper. In this case, the two different figures, A and B, represent the results from two different conjugates that I developed. Now, if you just focus at the moment on the blue lines, this is how effective the two different compounds were at killing a cancer cell line known as BE2C. And that is a neuroblastoma cancer cell line. And for those of you who don't know, neuroblastoma is a terrible cancer that affects children and it has a mortality rate of over 50%. So it's one of the many cancers where current treatments just don't work well enough. So if we just look at the blue lines, it would appear that compound A is a much better option because particularly at 
high concentrations, it's much more effective at killing the cancer cells. However, I'd like you to look now at the red lines. The red lines do not represent a cancer cell line. They represent the results in a non-malignant cell line called MRC5. And as you can see, although compound B is effective at killing the cancer cells, it's also pretty effective at killing the normal cells. So basically what I'd made there was just a toxic compound. However, if you look at figure A, you can see that the compound there doesn't have any effect at all on the MRC5 cells at the concentrations tested, making it a much more promising compound. But if you don't do this comparison, you have no idea of knowing whether you actually have something that is selectively toxic to cancer cells or whether you are just testing a compound that is toxic to cells in general. The other thing I'd like to draw your attention to is the green line in figure A. And this is also a neuroblastoma cancer cell line known as SHSY5Y. What a name. But as you can see, the compound that I made is much more effective at killing this cancer cell line than what it is at killing the BE2C cancer cell line. So if we just wanted to be misleading, we could have just tested my compound against this cancer cell line, which is easier to kill. So that's another thing to be mindful of with in vitro research. Some cancer cell lines are easier to kill than others. Of course, showing that a compound kills cancer cells but doesn't kill normal cells by itself still isn't enough to say that it's going to be an effective cancer treatment. In vitro research is typically done in what are known as well plates. And this is an example of one here. In a nutshell, essentially what happens is the wells, and there's 96 of them in this particular one, are seeded with cancer cells. And then they're exposed to different concentrations of the compound. So you'll put, you know, one concentration there, another concentration there, another concentration there. And that, that they're incubated for a period of time at 37 degrees. And as you can imagine, in a situation like this, it's quite easy for the compound to interact with all the cells. Inside a tumour, it's not so simple. So just because you can kill the cells in a well plate doesn't mean that you'll actually be able to kill them in the human body. Another important thing to consider with in vitro research is whether the concentration that is being used is actually achievable in the human body. A common way to compare the potency of drugs is using what is known as the IC50 value. The IC50 is the concentration of drug necessary to produce 50% inhibition. And if we go back to the ivermectin study again, you can see that the IC50 value was between about five and 16 micromolar, depending on the cell line and also the amount of time that the cells were incubated for. To see whether that's achievable or not, you need to compare this concentration with the concentration that can be achieved in the blood after taking acceptable doses of ivermectin. And that's exactly what they've done in this review paper. It surveyed the literature and reported what levels of ivermectin were achievable in the blood at both standard doses and overdoses. This table summarises what they found. At standard doses, the maximum concentration achieved is between 23.1 and 92.6 nanomoles per litre, which is 62 to 249 times less than the lowest IC50 value in the ivermectin cancer study. And even if we go to overdose levels, the maximum concentration is only 282 nanomoles per litre, which is over 20 times less than the lowest ivermectin IC50 value. And not only has the IC50 concentrations in this paper never been achieved before in humans, they also couldn't be because ivermectin just isn't that water soluble. So even if you took 100 times the approved dose, it wouldn't all end up in the blood at the concentrations necessary. In the study, they would have had to have used some sort of solvent 
to actually get it into solution, most likely either DMSO or ethanol. Unfortunately, we don't know which one they used or whether they used something else because they don't tell us. Now, one important thing to note is that even though this particular research is pretty bad and definitely doesn't show anything for ivermectin and cancer, it doesn't mean that all research that's been done into ivermectin and cancer is equally bad. There are quite a number of studies that have been done and there is some research that looks potentially promising. For example, in this research study, they found that although ivermectin had no effect by itself, when it was used in conjunction with a type of immunotherapy, it increased its activity. This is still preclinical research, so it could still amount to nothing. But just because one research study isn't showing a benefit for ivermectin despite what they claim, it doesn't mean that ivermectin definitely won't be useful in cancer. In summary, in vitro research is an important first step in cancer research, but it's important not to overhype it. And it also needs to be done properly. Killing cancer cells in world plates is not the same as killing them in the human body. And sadly, most products that are successful in preclinical research won't be successful in clinical trials. Alas, overhyping in vitro research is only one of many types of false cancer cure claims. There are many others, and I will be covering a lot more of them in future videos, as well as continuing to cover COVID and vaccine misinformation. So if you'd like to see them, please hit the subscribe button. And if you'd like to look further into the data that I've presented, I've provided links in the video's description. And please remember this video is about the science, but you shouldn't take it as medical advice. For that, you should speak to your medical practitioner. Thank you for listening. If you found this video useful, please hit the like button so that more people will see it. Thank you.